guys. It's Wednesday, middle of the weekday, the day where you get over the hump and you get to go towards the weekend. Hang in there, kids. <laughs> How are y'all? You know, when I was a little guy, when I was a little boy, used to watch cartoons, still do. This is The Iron Giant, one of the greatest movies you'd ever watch with your family. Watch it with your kids, watch it with your grandkids. Tremendous, tremendous movie. That's the record right there. My daughter got it for me, the music. The end of that movie shows you exactly what happened in the gospel. That's all I gotta say about that. Anyway, also, when I was a little boy, we did memory verses with my dad all the time. That's right, I'm gonna take a sip of my good coffee. Hey, boys and girls, it's Pastor Rogers. Be kind to each other. All right. Can you say hello? I knew you could. Hello. Okay, listen. I'm a little guy. Dad says I want you to memorize uh, 10 verses this week. Take you to a movie. Something like that, right? Dad uh, was good at making sure we knew the Word of God. <clears throat> we loved John eleven thirty five. 35. Shortest verse in the Bible. What did it say? Jesus wept. John eleven thirty five. Jesus wept. John eleven thirty five. You had to say the scripture reference before and after the verse. So you knew where the address was, right? Love that verse. John eleven thirty five. Jesus wept. Didn't get what it meant at the time, but we knew it was an easy verse to memorize, right? <laughs> well, today I'm giving you the easiest psalm to memorize. It is two verses. The shortest psalm. Out there, Psalm 117. That's right. I will read you Psalm 117, then we'll talk about it. Let's pray. Lord, everybody that's watching has a different day ahead of them. And as we look at the long day ahead, we pray, Lord, for your protection. And we pray for your um, know-how and wisdom to be in us. Please, Father, would you take um, the anger and any bitterness away, any worry, and I pray that you would rearrange our hearts this morning with your word through the Spirit's grace and teaching. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Psalm 117, here's the two verses. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise him, all you people of the earth. For his unfailing love for us is powerful. The Lord's faithfulness endures forever. Praise the Lord. I'm going to reread it in the Amplified Bible. Oh, praise the Lord, all you nations! Exclamation point. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise him, all you people. For his mercy and loving kindness are great toward us. And the truth and faithfulness of the Lord endure forever. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, this psalm may be short, but this psalm is packed um, I'm going to read it to you in the message. Praise God, everybody. Applaud God, all you people. His love has taken over our lives. God's faithful ways are eternal. Hallelujah. Don't forget that word. Hallelujah. Hallel. Praise Yah, the Lord, Yahweh. Martin Luther took this two-verse psalm, and he wrote a 36-page commentary to it expounding it in four important categories, okay? Here's what he said. One, it's prophecy. The Gentiles, everybody in the world will participate in the gospel blessings. Two, it's revelation. The kingdom of Christ is not earthly and temporal, but rather heavenly and eternal. Three, instruction. We are saved by faith alone, not by works, wisdom or holiness. It's his loving kindness and mercy. Four, admonition. Praise God for such a great salvation. He wrote 36 pages on two verses. 
And when I started thinking about it, okay, think about the first thing he says. One, all the nations will praise the Lord. Even the ones that no one expects to praise the Lord will praise the Lord. All the people from other countries that you and I in our small North American thinking, and we think they'll never come to Christ, they are coming to Christ in far greater numbers than they're then the Canadians are coming back to Jesus. Every nation on earth, the Bible says, every nation will come to repentance and Christ. Does God get what he wants? Does God fulfill his promises? Well, Abraham got this promise way back in Genesis 12, 3. God said, I will bless those who bless you, Abraham, Curse those who treat you with contempt, and all the families on earth will be blessed through you. My favorite verse is Revelation 7, 9. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. Do you get that? A great tribe that no one could count. There's two billion Christians alive right now. What about all the ones that have been alive in the past? People that looked forward to the Messiah and were looking forward in faith to being saved by God. What about all the people that are going to get saved 100 years from now? Why do I say that? Because it is God's desire, Peter said, that none should perish but that all should come to repentance. I don't panic about the headlines. Yeah, I want Jesus to come back, but his mercy is so greater, much greater than mine. He wants to save people. So Peter says he hasn't come back yet because he's not slow in keeping his promises, but his desire that none should perish. He wants all men everywhere to come to salvation in Jesus. For the most part, the Jews um, looked with little sympathy on their neighbors that weren't saved and they had no desire that their neighbors would know God save they become proselytes of Judaism right this is the commentators words not mine but where the love of God is strong in the heart it overleaps the bounds of custom and racial prejudice and yearns that all the world should know and love the Savior F.B. Meyer said that the love of God where it is strong in the heart overleaps the bounds of custom and racial prejudice and yearns that all the world should know and love the Savior. This psalm is an intimation to Israel that the grace and mercy of their God were not to be confined to one nation, but would be happier in happier days, be extended to all the race of men. Spurgeon said that. This psalm is part of six Hallel or praise psalms that Jesus and the disciples would have recited in the upper room at their Passover meal the night before he was betrayed. He would have sung Psalm 117 with his disciples. Therefore, on the eve of his crucifixion, we know Jesus had all the peoples of the world in mind as he was going to the cross. God would call a people to himself. He would make one nation out of every tribe, people, and language. The historical limitations of God's manifestation to a special nation were means to its universal spread. The fire was gathered in a grate that it might warm the whole house. All men have a share in what God did for Israel. I love this truth, guys. Jesus is for the whole world. Don't limit him. Don't limit him. Um, You see the people that have a different skin color across the street from you or working at the store. They will know. Jesus will be proclaimed to them at some point. Pray that they come to him. Pray that they bend the knee. The message is to God's people this morning, you and me, if you're understanding that Jesus loves you, understand that Jesus loves the whole world. The message is to all God's people. And this is how he says to proclaim God. Applaud him. Proclaim his goodness to the people around you. Laud him. Um, Haste, haste to bring him laud. That old um, Christmas hymn 
what child is this says. Proclaim the goodness of God to the people around you. His merciful kindness is great. That Hebrew word is hesed. Hesed. Hesed, sorry. I'm trying to say it properly. Hesed. And get this. Um, it says his great hesed hesed in the Hebrew. What does that mean? Well, it means in the Hebrew, when they want to emphasize something, they say something twice. So his hesed hesed, his mercy, mercy. He is holy, holy, holy. And he has mercy, mercy. Hesed, hesed. And his great hesed. I, I, I was in the Blue Letter Bible this morning, and great is the word gever. It is a word that means gever, hesed, hesed. His great mercy, mercy for you and for me. It's great in its strength. It prevails over sin, Satan, hell, and death. His mercy, mercy is for all people that would take advantage of it. Truth and faithfulness, his truth and faithfulness will endure forever. Truth is not invented by us. We don't get to say, um, this is my truth I'm speaking to you today. That's You don't invent truth. Truth is truth or it's not, okay? Um, your um, reversal of a truth doesn't make it still true, right? Truth is not invented by man. It is truth, universally true. God the one true God who made heaven and earth. That religion, that faith in Yahweh who made heaven and earth and sent Jesus Christ to be our Savior and then Jesus who died on the cross and rose again from the dead and ascended to his throne in heaven and sent the Holy Spirit down to you today. That is not man-made truth. We say that in our creed to acknowledge what is true. And he, his truth will not change. Hasn't changed for thousands of years. It's not going to change just because of a cultural moment where we want to temporarily ban the Messiah. Ain't going to happen. He is faithful. He won't change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Who he was when the children of Israel were stuck between the Egyptian army and the Red Sea is who he is today. Who he was when he got on a cross and let himself be killed to forgive Peter's sin of abandonment is the same person he is today to forgive Bob Evans, to love you in spite of your sin, to put it in the past. There was a great scene last night on The Chosen. Um, I'm watching season two and Matthew, you know, he's pretty well shunned by a lot of the disciples. You can bet your boots it was hard for the disciples to put up with the guy that used to be a tax collector. And, you know, he's kind of like the third wheel. He's kind of out there on his own. The rest of the disciples are in a pack. And and uh, Philip, who was a follower of John the Baptist, becomes one of Jesus' disciples and shows up. He's kind of an encourager. I like him. I like his character in The Chosen. And Matthew tells uh, Philip how he's just on the outside. And Philip says past is in the past don't let them treat you like you were in the past because you're not that person anymore see that faithfulness to bob evans to you to me is the same and that faithfulness to us that gever hesed hesed that great mercy mercy is yours this morning the rising of the sun god isn't going to fire you for being a human <laughs> He's not your boss. He's your dad. He's your Abba Father. He loves you. And though our sins may be great, and though the world's sins may be great, his mercy is more.
Hesed, Hesed, he is greater than our sins. He's so good. He loves you so much. Have a day where you remember that. Memorize this song, I dare you. Two whole verses. I think you can handle it. Hey, guys, uh, just before I pray, I wanted to remind you of a couple things. One is, um, on Thursdays now, there's a new uh, thing I'm doing with my brother called, his name is Paul Evans. He's a uh, um, doctor, uh, sorry, teacher of Old Testament and the Bible and uh, Hebrew and Greek expert. And he is helping me with a new show called, a um, uh, new show, a new podcast, video podcast called The Pastor and the Professor. And we're going to be talking about how to read the book of Revelation. And maybe is the world, end of the world coming soon? We'll see. We got sports with Ollie, a kid from my church. And um, I, got a, I got a movie review and uh, some new music. So, Show up, um, if you can, on Facebook here um, tomorrow night at 7. And also, I wanted to uh, tell you about our new sermon series on Sundays, Forged in Fire. We're starting the book of Second Peter. The church um, was tough back in the first century. And we can be tough too. I really believe that what God's doing to the church in this pandemic is forging us in fire so we can have the tempered steel of virtue as our backbone. And if you're in the area, come to church at the hub. We got the weather's gonna be fantastic. Bring a lawn chair. It's gonna be Sunday at the hub at 9 and 10:30. And show um, go to a place belong.ca to register, save your spot, bring a lawn chair, wear a mask. That's what Dr. Bonnie Henry wants. So we're gonna wear a mask so we can come to church, sit in our lawn chairs, and uh, enjoy fellowship together. So just a couple things there. I love you. And I want to pray for you. Let's pray. Lord, would you please um, put in our hearts the very center of our core this morning, Lord. Our identity as your children. That God, your mercy has saved us. That we are transformed. And may we be transformed. May we not remain the way we are. May we become more like Jesus, your great son. I thank you for your mercy that is more and more powerful 
your Hesed Hesed, your Gver Hesed Hesed to us today. You are holy, 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 and we are grateful for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys have a good day, and I will see you uh, tomorrow at 7 a.m. and then uh, Thursday night if you come for the pastor and the professor. Have a good one.